Okay, guys, good morning. All right, good morning. All right, so we're going to start. Uh, today we're going to go over packaging and shipment. This is Chapter 4 in your, in your uh, Certified Logistics Technician Certification Exam, okay? So remember, the uh, Manufacturing Skills Standards Council, Certified Logistics Associate, and Certified Logistics Technician are your industry certifications uh, for this program, okay? So right now we're going to cover Chapter 4 of the Certified Logistics Technician, which is the second part of the certification, all right? Okay, so packaging and shipment. So this is an extension of the previous lesson, which was shipping and receiving. Okay, so this is the part, you know, once you package up your, your product inside of the box and, and you put on all the shipping labels, now the, the next step is to actually package it up in, in, your, uh, in an actual pallet and palletize it and then actually put it on the truck and ship it out. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, all right, so, I'm going to go over uh, this module, okay? Then you guys are going to answer 10 questions at the end of class. But before that, what we're going to do is you guys are going to learn in a practical way. I have different stations set up around the room. You guys will be in groups. So I have the truck simulator, the forklift simulator, the reach lift simulator. I'll get into more detail a little bit later. Uh, and we also have the, um, we're gonna, you guys are going to load uh, a truck, a 53-foot drive van in the back. And I'll explain what that is in just a second. And then we're also going to do palletizing. So we're going to have five different stations. Okay, actually six different stations, excuse me. All right. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over the different loading configurations that you would use when you're loading a 53-foot dry van trailer. Okay, does anybody know what a 53-foot dry van, when I say the word dry, what does that mean? The temperature of the truck and, and, and whether the, or not the freight would need to be uh, temperature controlled, right? Okay. What about a refrigerated trailer? What does that tell you? Exactly. So, so the, the temperature of the trailer is controlled. Why, why would you need to do that? Okay, exactly. So you, you have perishables on board. So you have lemons. You have... Well, give me some examples, actually. What, do you, what are some examples of perishable goods? Salads. Okay. Fruits. Okay. What else? What do you got over here? Ice cream. Yeah, exactly. That's right. You don't want, it, you don't want that to spoil. Okay. So... So what we're going to do is, as an, as an extension of, of this module, we're going to go over the loading configurations of the pallets, of, of different pallet positions on the truck, okay? So well, I'm going to go ahead, let me show you guys. This is uh, in Schoology, so you're going to go into Schoology and open up this worksheet because this is going to be an attachment to the module that we're going to complete, okay? All right, so we have, we have a different, here on your worksheet, you're going to see different pallet sizes. So it's, it's length by width, okay? All right, so this is in inches, 48 by 48. These are different standard uh, pallets that you would use to load a truck, right? So you have your 48 by 48 inch, 48 by 40, so on and so forth. But your most standard, your most common pallet that you're going to use is your 48 by 40 inch pallet, okay? And then when you load that pallet, when you load those pallets onto a truck, these are your different configurations. So your straight configuration, your turn configuration, pinwheel, and distributing weight. And the difference, the real difference in it is that you, is the way that you load the pallet, right? Because remember, the pallet isn't a, isn't a square, it's a rectangle. So you would load it on the short side. If you load the, the traditional way of loading a truck, you would put the, you know, you would put the pallets one row, uh, bo both rows next to each other, and you would put them on, you would load them on the short side. So you see here, as you can tell, this is a 40-inch side, so you would load it on that side turn is the pallets are rotated 90 degrees and the reason why you would do that is you're maximizing the space in the trailer and then pinwheel is a combination of straight and turn okay and as you can tell different pallet configurations means you can fit different uh, a different amount of pallets on the truck you're trying to maximize the amount of volume that you have on the truck so 26 pallets for a straight configuration 30 pallets for a turn configuration and pinwheel is at 28 question the one that's used the most is the straight configuration. That's the most common method that's used. The pallet size would be 48 by 40 inches. Okay, so that's your standard pallet. So to have a visual, you can, if you guys turn around, you'll see the pallets over there in the back. Those are the actual pallets that we're going to be, that I'm referring to here, the 48 by, 48 by 40 inch pallets. Okay. All right. So any questions on this so far? Okay. So guys, the idea of maximizing the volume in the truck is remember more pallets equals more product equals more uh, profit, right? So that's a, that's a extremely important for companies, for logistics companies, which their margins are usually pretty tight. Okay, all right. So 
So now what I'm going to do is, I explain this, so now I'm going to show you guys a video of, of, uh, of this in action, of actual, an actual forklift loading these pallets onto the truck. Okay? All right. So... So this is your traditional loading method, your straight loading method, okay? This is the easiest way to load a full truck. The mouths are loaded into a trailer facing forward and stash of 20. The normal trailer can hold 520 pounds. You want to make sure the stats are standard in the way it is in the all rounds. So as you can see, the pallets are loaded on the short side. You got one row on the left side and another row on the right side. They're next to each other. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm going to fast forward over to the pinwheeled method. So the pinwheeled method, again, remember, you got, it's a combination of straight and turn loading configuration. So you have your straight pallet on one side and then your turn pallet on the right side or and vice versa. And it, and it, inter, it interlocks, it, it, uh, it alternates. So you're going to see it now. So this is your pinwheel method. So you see you load one pallet, you're going to load it sideways. The other pallet, you're going to load it straight. So you get two more pallet configurations this way. Okay, now we're going to move on to the, the turn method, which here they call it the wide method. It's, it's an analogous term. The side by side ensures you can fully optimize your load. This method calls for all pallets to be loaded on the 48 inch side, allowing you to have 30 stacks each of 22 pallets. 30 stacks by 20 pallets per stack equals 600 pallets. Okay, so as you can see, there's a couple of ways. Hang on. Let me back this up just a second here. If you notice, there's a couple of ways to load these pallets onto the truck. There you go. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to load this on. You see these notches right here? This is actually how you would load. The, the forklift forks would fit right here. So you can load it either that way, pick it up and load it, just like you would using the 40 inch, this is the 48 inch side, just like you would use it on the 40 inch side. So you can use those notches or you can just push the freight in because the, the trucks have wooden floors so it would slide without a problem, okay? All right. Okay guys, and just a reminder, uh, you, can see the, you can see the video on this screen or on this screen as well, okay? So for those of you in the back, make sure that uh, you guys can use this screen as well. I had the audio coming out of this side. Go ahead, question? Yeah, so are you able to load different sizes of pallets in the same truck, or do they all have to be in the same size? It really depends on the operation. I mean, there's just there's a lot of answers for that. It's a good question. There's a, there's um, It just depends on, on what it is you're moving, what it is the, 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 the commodity, the operation, where it's going, all those different variables. But uh, Companies are always going to try to maximize the volume that they can. You can't always use the straight, the straight method. You can't always use the turn method. You can't always use the pinwheel. Every situation is different. They do try to uh, reuse the same method over and over again, though, because then if you, if you start varying it too much, then there's mistakes. So that's a good question. All right, moving along, guys. So let's go ahead. Any questions on this? So you guys understand the three different types of configurations, right? Okay, great. Awesome. So let's move along to packaging and shipment to the actual uh, lesson itself, okay? So we're going to cover, so some of the terms that we're going to cover in this, uh, in this module are uh, primary packaging. So primary packaging is the package that your actual product is in, okay? 
So pr primary packaging is, is like I said, the, the, it's, the, it's the product, the, the package where your product is actually in. Secondary packaging is the, the box in which it's shipped. You'll see that now. And then transport packaging is like the pallet over there in the back. So you see it's shrink wrapped. And then you can also see the secondary packaging because the secondary packaging is within the pallet. So it's considered, this is considered a transport packaging, but you have examples of both in the same pallet. Bless you. All right. So guys, make sure you have this open. This is, again, this is chapter four, packaging and shipment. Uh, so you guys are going to see, so you guys can follow along, okay? And then you guys can answer the question after, after the, uh, the lecture. Yeah. Okay, all right guys, so the, the idea behind the packaging, the reason why you would package your freight is just, it's to, to be able to avoid all these issues that it could deal with in transport, right? You're trying to protect your product so that it gets to you, you know, in one piece, right? So, as you can see, these are different types of uh, protection for your packages, right? So you have your cardboard boxes, your corrugated uh, uh, packaging, your paper, and then you see here, this is more for like fragile on them. You can see the thickness of the padding. So like if you're shipping something like glass or you're shipping something that can break and it's very fragile and it'll usually have shipment labels on the outside, um, then you're gonna have to use you know padding that's a little bit more, uh, it's softer so that way your package doesn't break or your product doesn't break, okay? All right, we're gonna move along here to uh, the third slide. Is the of using so it's all about protection. You gotta protect your, your, whatever it is you're shipping. The primary purpose of Okay, so I'm going to pause it right here. So these are the different considerations that you have to take whenever you're packaging your product, right? So fragility, we just talked about that. If you're shipping glass, if you're shipping something very fragile, you need to be careful and you need to consider that whenever you're, you're deciding what you're going to use for packaging. What storage and transport condition? Where's, what warehouse is it going to be in? You know, do they care about it? Do they not care about it? Do they treat it with, you know what I mean? Do they, they treat it with care, right? Any possible interactions? You know, I've, I've had issues in, when, I've, when I've worked in industry myself, I've seen all kinds of different things happen in a warehouse. Like for example, uh, you have a pallet, and then uh, a forklift will come, but, and by mistake, they'll stick the fork inside the pallet. And then that's a really big problem because it damages the product. Now you have a claim, you have an unhappy customer, and, you know. So, so those are considerations that you have to have. What type of transport is it going to be? Is it going to go on an airplane, on a boat, on a, on a truck, right? What uh, loading and unloading methods are going to use? What customer requirements? Uh, you know, what, is, what does your customer want too? Because at the end of the day, your customers won't pay for all this. Are they okay with you using all this extra stuff? Right? And also, what's the environmental impact? You also want to keep that in mind. All right? You want to have a, a sustainable and uh, responsible way of disposing of packaging once, you know, the product has, has arrived at its destination. Okay? All right, moving along. I'm going to try it. Let me try it on this side. One second, guys. Sometimes it's a little finicky, so I'm going to, I'm going to try it on this screen. There we go. Okay, guys, so so what do we think? What's the first one? What, what, what would be this one right here? And remember, you guys can see it on both screens, okay? 
All right, so this is secondary packaging. All right, what would be this one right here? Primary. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay, what about this one, This right here? Okay, there's your product. Okay, and then transport packaging. There you go. Great job, guys. Okay, moving along. Okay, I'm going to pause it right here and I'm going to talk about the uh, shipping labels, okay? So this is what we're really focused on in this module. Here's you have an example of a shipping label, right? You got your package all packaged up, you got it in your transport packaging, but the label is going to tell you where it's going to go. It's going to let the, the company that's going to pick it up, your transport company, know where it's actually going to go. Okay. So here's your return address, so where it's coming from. Here's your uh, the, the customer's address, where it's actually going to. And then here's your tracking number. Okay. Your ship date is important. Why would your ship date be important? Exactly. And when it well, actually when it ships, you know, you're, that would be you're thinking about your deliver by date. Okay, your deliver by date is important too because actually I'll, I'll pose that question to you guys. Why would you think it would be important to know the deliver by date? Right, so you know what to expect, right? Your customer expects their product at a certain time, right? Like what's, what if it's like a human organ or like what if it's something important, right? Or for maybe for a special occasion, right? And it doesn't get there in time, all of a sudden you look bad, right? So it's important to know when it's supposed to ship, when it's supposed to deliver by, okay? All right. Also, what's the shipping speed? Standard, you know, expedited, you know, those are important considerations, okay? Uh, the difference in what? So it just depends. Every company is different, but typically, you know, like Amazon has, you know, two-day, you know, Amazon Prime, you have two-day delivery, right? Or you have the one-hour delivery sometimes if you, if you order a certain type of product. So that's, that's important, too. And another thing that, that there's a cost consideration, too, with that, right? You're going to pay more money if you want your package faster. Okay, what about the weight? Why would the weight be important? What do you guys think? Why would the weight be important? They charge you by weight, exactly, right? You know, it, it costs money, it costs fuel, right? The, the more weight you have on the plane, the more fuel it's going to take, right? Or on the truck, it's going to take more fuel to transport. It's more expensive for heavier products, okay? What's another consideration that, what's another way in which uh, shipping companies would charge you? Now that we're talking about weight, what's that? Distance, okay, good. The size, the volume, right, is what we're trying to get, right? We're talking about volume here. What if a product isn't that heavy, but it's it's big, right? So that's another way. So they wouldn't make money on the weight. They would make money on the size of it, right? Okay, so, so yeah. All right, so uh, here is the, um, here's uh, some labels that would be on the package as well. So cargo aircraft only. So um, uh, the uh, shipping label, the, the cargo aircraft only label, that's exactly what it means. There's no, there's no, uh, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's too dangerous to go on a, on a car, on a passenger airplane. You guys know that, you know, when you guys are flying on an airplane, there's, there's belly cargo, right? So, you know, that's how the passenger airlines make money, not just on, on, on passengers paying fares, right? So in this particular case, this freight is too dangerous. And, and a good example of this would be like lithium batteries, you know, lithium batteries, if they're, when you guys go to the airport, you go flying, they ask you that question, are you carrying lithium batteries? You know, so that, that's, that's usually they're shipped on, they're usually shipped on cargo aircraft. So that's an example of, of, you know, something that would go on a cargo aircraft only, okay? These other labels are do not stack, uh, which, you know, which is pretty self-explanatory. Don't stack it because it can, it can, you know, crumple, right? And protect from heat. Maybe it's something that's sensitive to heat or sensitive to light, okay? All right, moving along. Sure. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so uh, that's a great question. So the reason why you would have barcode is for automated systems. Okay. So anything automated, you know, a machine, machines are going to read it faster if you use a barcode. Like right, like we, when we went to, you guys remember when we went to the Amazon field trip? Yeah. When we went to the Amazon field trip, they had the packages coming in and they scanned the packages. It's a lot faster that way. Why? Because Amazon moves millions of packages a year, right? So it, it's going to take it's going to take more time if it's going to take more time if you have someone doing this manually versus someone doing this uh, with a barcode, right? Okay, let's move along.
Uh, but great question. Uh, I'm going to have to try it on here. Sorry, guys. Technology is great until it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to pause it right here. So, uh, shipping accuracy is important. You got to ship the product to the correct customer, to, right? You have to ship. You have to ship it with the right packaging. So there's a lot of considerations in terms of accuracy. Extremely important. Okay. All right, moving along. Okay, all right, guys, so moving along. So this uh, section talks about uh, safe trailer loading, which we covered already in terms of the three, the, the three loading configurations we covered earlier. Remember, straight, turned, and pinwheel, okay? So that's what this section covers. Also, it talks about the paperwork that goes, you know, that goes with the, uh, with the shipment, right? So uh, what, would, what would that be? What would you guys think that would be? What kind of paperwork do you think would be on the truck, uh, on the shipment? The manifest, the shipping manifest, right, exactly. Or what else? What other types of uh, documents would be on the, uh, with the, with the uh, what, what would be, I'll give you guys a hint. What would be considered the contract of carriage? Okay, so I'll give you guys, I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit. So guys, whenever you're shipping, uh, whenever you're shipping a, uh, whenever you have a shipment, right, you're, you're, have to, you're transferring responsibility of that shipment from the shipper to the, to the uh, carrier. Right. So the contract of carrier of excuse me, the contract of carriage is also known as the bill of lading. OK, so the bill of lading is it tells you that the, the, uh, the shipping address, the consignee, and it also tells you the, what what's going to be on board. OK. All right. So. All right, guys. So I'm going to end it here. Uh, so you guys are going to ask you guys are going to answer the questions. But first, you're going to answer the questions at the end of class. OK. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move on to our practical activities okay so like i mentioned earlier you know it's it's always great to learn you know by me lecturing but it's also it's even better to learn when you're actually you know when you actually are doing it right so again just to kind of recap you have the different we have our different stations which we're actually going to apply the knowledge that we just learned okay so you have our truck simulator our forklifts our reach lift uh, simulator and in the back we have our palletizing station and our truck loading, our trailer loading station, okay? So, all right, guys, so here on the board is the different groups that you're going to be in. So everybody uh, just take a look at that, and then uh, you guys can go ahead, you guys can go ahead and break off into groups, and I'll go station by station answering any questions you have. For those of you that are the supervisors, go over, go over the, um, the assignment with, uh, with your team, okay? And I'm going to go by and answer any questions that you have. Yeah, yeah, you guys would start first. So. All right, so the first station. So let's go over. Okay, so here we're going to fill out. We're going to fill out the, uh, the dispatch sheet, okay? So you're going to be driving, and then Montasia is going to be. Actually, let me, let me go on this side better. All right, there we go. So. You're going to be the driver, Trey, you're going to be the driver, and Montez, you're going to be the dispatcher. So you have to fill out this entire sheet, okay? So you put your names, put the, uh, the, the starting amount of money. You have to pick a load, pick the, put the shipper name, the trip distance, the consignee, okay? Then you have to put the commodity, the trailer, the weight, the dimensions, and then also put the income of the job. So all this information, you'll find it on here. So let's go ahead and pick a route that you guys want to use. So remember, try to keep it under 600 miles, okay? Go ahead, take a seat. 
So here's your money on the top. Okay. All right. So here's your money. So right now you're at nine hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So go ahead and go to job market, and let's pick a let's pick a load that's going to be uh, six hundred miles or less. And guys, why would we use six hundred miles as a uh, as a, a number for you know? Why would we use that number? How many miles would you drive in a day? Six hundred miles, right? That's a trick question. So remember, if you're driving 55 miles an hour at times 11 hours, which is your duty time for a truck driver, it'd be around five, 600 miles, roughly, okay? All right, so go ahead and pick a load that's under 600 miles. Try to get the best cost per mile, okay? Your best cost per mile is the most efficient use of the truck. There you go, so you got a Peterbilt 389, so let's go ahead and start filling out the worksheet. Okay, so here's the truck making model. So it's right there. It's uh, Peterbilt. Oh, go ahead, read, uh, read it to her. So it's an 18 speed, okay? What does that word mean, 18 speeds? 18 gears, exactly. Yeah. Okay, now let's fill out the shipper name and the city. Okay, perfect. Here you would put your trip distance and the time. Okay. So that's that's about right. Seven hundred miles. That's fine. It it varies, you know, between depending on the driver, you can do between five and seven hundred miles. Six hundred is usually the average. Okay, there you go. So Yuma, Arizona, to uh, what's the constant? Okay, Redding, California. So that's in you know, that's in the southwest of the part of the country. You're gonna be driving through a. Uh, through desert, a lot of desert out there. Okay. okay, so your commodity is clothing. It's right there. Yep. Is it? It's not considered hazmat. The trailer is what kind of trailer? Okay, it'll it'll say when you hit take job. You'll see it. You'll just change the camera angle. You'll be able to see the trailer. Uh, dimensions dimensions is only used if you have like oversized freight. So this is a standard load, thirty thousand pounds. It's probably going to be a fifty-three foot drive and trailer. Okay, so uh, the, what's the, you're gonna have to look up the weather along the route, so you'll do that while he's driving, and then the job. How much is the job pay? Twenty thousand. Go ahead and write that down, and then here you're gonna have to calculate the cost per mile. So Trey, what would be considered a good load, man? Anything over how many? How, how much per mile? How many dollars per mile? Well, you, you, your dad's in the industry. You should know this stuff. Forty-five dollars a mile. Okay, I mean that's more for like oversized, but what would be really, you know, depending on the market and everything, but usually between four or five bucks a mile, usually a pretty good load. All right. So in this particular case, this is twenty-five dollars a mile. So that's, uh, you know, that's that's awesome. That's a great load. Uh, so it's a little bit, you know, in that in that regard, it's a little bit high, but that's fine. Okay, so uh, the date and time of departure, you want to put that, and that's going to be found here, okay? All right, let's see. There you go, there you go. There's your time, Sunday, 7.59 p.m. And then the time you arrive, it'll be in, this is in the game time. Okay, so go ahead and fill this out as he's driving, okay? And remember to fill out the trailer, all right? So I'll leave you to this. I'll come back a little bit later and check up on you. All right, guys, so uh, you guys are loading. You're in the forklift over here, right? Okay, so what, what kind of configuration are we doing now? Uh, we're doing straight. Straight, okay, perfect. Straight loading configuration. All right. Okay, how about you guys? What uh, Where are you guys at right now? You're still doing the straight configuration as well? Okay, remember, here here is your straight and turn uh, configuration, your pinwheel, so everything's right here, okay? So once you're done uh, loading the trailer, then it'll be Shannon's turn. So you guys are going to switch, okay? Once Harry's done, you'll switch. Okay. All right? Okay, great job, guys. I'll be around if you have any questions. Okay, moving along. Okay, guys, so uh, how are we doing over here? Okay, awesome. So you guys are staging the freight right in front of the dock door. So when the truck comes, it picks it up. Okay, so uh, guys, what's the difference between these two forklifts? What would, you know, what, what, what would be the advantage of using... 
the reach lift forklift versus using the, the traditional sit down forklift. The reach forklift can uh, stretch out the, the, force, the, the force. force. Yeah, you, you can. You can. Yeah, it's definitely an advantage. But but think about think about the the aisles. Think about okay. Think about it's it in more, this way. It's more essential because you can like. There you go. That's what I was looking for right there. Right. Exactly. This is more, yeah, the, the, what I was trying to get out, you, you kind of touched on the answer, was you can use the, the reach lift uh, forklift for more narrow aisles. So when you have more narrow aisles, you have more what? More product, right? In the warehouse, okay? Okay, great job, guys. So I'll be around. You guys just keep, uh, keep staging the freight there, and then I'll, I'll be back around in case you have questions. Okay, we're going to go to the uh, trailer loading station. All right. Okay, guys, so, uh, so you guys are doing the straight loading configuration right now, right? And then after that, you guys will move on to what? Yeah, you're loading it, but what? Right now you're using straight configuration, but then what are you gonna do? Side one? Okay, good, perfect. All right, so guys, be uh, yeah, back up a second. Let her go through. Okay. And guys, I want to point out the fact. Great job on the on the, uh, the personal protective equipment. You got the gloves. You got the uh, helmets on. So. Okay, great job, guys. But remember, you want to load it. Perfect. You got good technique. Watch this cone right here. Remember, this is the side of the trailer. Okay, so just back up. I know it's a little bit tight in here. But just because of the weather, we had to do this inside. Okay. All right, so now you're going to load it. Perfect. You're going to load it right here. And then you're going to move. You're going to load the other one here. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on to the palletizing station. All right, guys, so remember, we're going to be doing 20 on the bottom, 20 pounds on the bottom. 10 pounds in the middle, and then five pounds on top, okay? And these are your different zip codes. So 33126, 33132, uh, and then over here you have 33166. So these are your different zip codes, okay? All right, we're looking good, guys. Great job. All right. Okay, so uh, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it.